Gilgamesh, a verse narrative by Herbert Mason, 1970. In the morning, when they had bathed and were preparing to return to Uruk, Ishtar came, their city's patroness, goddess of love and fruitfulness and war. She brought to Gilgamesh his royal robes and crown and hinted that the gods had grieved to Humbaba's loss. Why should you be chosen as the one they blame? She said in her coyness. I might persuade my father Anu to relent if you marry me. That is the way your kingdom will know peace. Gilgamesh shook off what were to him unwanted dreams. What would I gain by taking you as wife? Love, she said, and peace. Just as you loved the lion and gave him pits to fall in, and the horse whose back you wounded with the whip, he shouted back at her. Your love brings only war. You are an old fat whore, that's all you are, who once was beautiful, perhaps, and could deceive, but who has left in them a memory of grief. We outgrow our naivete in thinking goddesses return our love. I'm tired of your promises, tired as Ishulanu, who brought you dates, innocent until you pressed his hand against your breasts and turned him to a mole who lived beneath the surface of your earth, unable to dig out to air, feeling in his darkness for that same soft touch. He subsided in his insults and turned away to his friend in Kidu. She stuttered she was so enraged and flew to the protection of her father. In his customary calm, wise, Anu noted that her sins had been declaimed this way before. She shook in greater rage and said she had no time to listen to reminders from old gods, but only to ask him to make for her the bowl of heaven to destroy this man. I will send him something he would never wish to dream. There will be more dead than living on this earth, a drought that nothing will relieve. He listened while her anger ran its course and then reminded her, men need survival after punishments. Have you stored for them enough grain? She knew her father's weakness for details and said, I thought of that, they will not starve, but a little hunger will replace their arrogance with new desire. Then Anu acceded to her wish, the bull of heaven descended to the earth and killed at once three hundred men, and then attacked King Gilgamesh. And Kidu, to perfect, protect his friend, found strength. He lunged from side to side, watching for his chance to seize the horns. The bull frothed in its rage at this dance, and suddenly Enkidu seized its tail and twisted it around until the bull stood still, bewildered, out of breath. And then Enkidu plunged his sword behind its horns into the nape of the bull's neck, and it fell dead. The goddess stood on Uruk's walls and cried aloud, Grief to those who have insulted me and killed the bull of heaven. When Enkidu heard his Ishtar's curse, he tore the right thigh from the bull's flesh and hold, hurled it in her face and shouted, I would tear you just like this if I could catch you. Then she withdrew among the prostitutes and mourned with them the bull of heaven's death.